Hello, and welcome to this video on Microsoft Excel. Now, recently I got a question about how you can utilize the VLOOKUP to take a value, go to a master list, look up that value, and return potentially multiple values that match that lookup. Typically, a VLOOKUP will find a match and then return the first match that it finds. Well, I've got two techniques that I'm gonna show off here where you can use a lookup to look up a value, find the match, and return potentially multiple matching values. Now I'm gonna show off two techniques because one of them is gonna work inside of 2019 of Excel or newer. If you're in 2016 or older, then you're gonna have to use the other technique. And unfortunately, it is a bit more involved, but it can be done. That's what we're gonna take a look at here today. Now, if you'd like, I've got an example file that I'm gonna to use to demonstrate these two techniques. You can hop down to the description right down below this video, look for the Office New Blog link, and you can download the file. The file is called multiple values-01, and it's an Excel file. Now, while you're down there in the description, if you enjoy this video, if you learned something new, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know you've enjoyed it. And if you haven't already, you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you get updates about new videos that I post to this channel regularly. All right, let's jump in and take a look at how you can accomplish this task. So the first option that we have here is, like I said, it's gonna be a little bit more involved, a bit more moving parts for us. It's gonna utilize five different functions. It's gonna utilize the index, the if, the small, and in our scenario, the row and the column function. Let's take a look at this one. This is a good one if you're working inside of 2016 of Excel or older. So I've got a simple little list here on the left-hand side. This is, this is what we're gonna consider our master list. It's got a list of names, projects for those names, and then the time spent for each of these individuals on those projects. Now imagine this, somebody comes to you and says, hey, I've got a list of the unique projects. I need you to give me all the team members for each of these projects. There's project A, who's on that project? Project B, who's on that project? And so on. Well, we could run filters to do this, right? Like you say, filter that list, show me project A. And that'll give me a list of all the individuals on project A. All right, now filter for project B. Give me back all the names for project B. But a filter is kind of one at a time, right? I just want to get a simple list. Just give me a list of the names and do it for each of the projects so I can view them all right there. Here's the formula. So I've already got Letitia done. If you look at my formula bar there, you can see that it's, it's a bit involved. There's a few moving parts going on here. We got the index, we got the small, we got the if, we got the row, and we got the column function. Now let's break this down a little bit. We're gonna break down each of the functions here and determine what they're doing for us. So the first one we got here is the index. The index function, all it does in this scenario is take a range, like A2 to A21, that's ultimately what we wanna return. We wanna return names. So index, look at that range right there. The second thing it wants is A, and this is all of this right here, is from that range, what row do you want back? Let's see an example. If I hop over here and I say equals index, first thing I'm gonna do is grab this array or range of cells, A2 to A21, comma, the next thing it wants to know is what row do you want back from that range? So if I do comma, and let's say I just type in a four. Four, I'll close the parentheses, hit my enter key, and it says, oh, I found Herb at row four of that range. Here's that range, right? One, two, three, Herb's at the fourth position. Boop, done. Right, but that number four inside that formula, that's not a known value, right? We need to return a name, but based off of the project name. 
So we essentially need to know what project row or project A, what row that's found in. That's the tricky part. Okay, but that's the index. It just takes an array, a range of cells, and says, okay, what position within that range or that range do you want back? Okay. Well, in order for us to dynamically find the range or the row that we want back, that's where these other functions come into play. Small, row, and column. Well, what do each of these do? If I go to K2 here, column, yeah. If I just type in equals column, open, close parentheses, that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'll hit enter. And this cell is in column 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's all it does. It just returns the column, in this case, of that cell. If I do row, what do you think? It's going to tell me what row this cell's in. Well, it's in row two, right? Row one, row two. Done. And we can do math on that. I can say, if I come up to my formula, I can say, uh, subtract one from that. Enter. Oh, it was row two, but we subtracted one. We got back one. And I can do the same thing with columns. Well, I don't want the actual column. I want a relative column. I'm going to subtract five from that. Then we got back our six. So it's actually column six relative to that column right there. Okay. So just row and column return what column or row we're currently in. Now we can also, with something like row, we could say, uh, let's see, A, A2. And I'll hit my enter key. A2 is actually inside of row two, right? But we subtracted one from it. So it gave me back a one. If I hit my enter key here, I'll just delete that off. There's my two. Okay, so we can give it a literal reference or we can just use a relative term and say just row, okay? That'll give you back the row of the current active cell, the formulas within. Now, small, what does small do? Well, if I type in equals small, it takes two arguments. It's got an array and a K value or what I'll call an nth value. So it just takes an array of numeric values and then you get to tell it, I want to find the smallest first value or smallest fifth value. That's what the K represents. So first our array, I'll grab this range right here, C2 to C21, comma, and I'll just say uh, one. Hit my enter key. And zero, one of these zeros was the smallest value within there, the first smallest value. So I could change that K value from a one to a two, to a three, to a four, find the fourth smallest, find the sixth smallest, and so on. So we got column, row, and small, and then index. So remember, index takes a range. Now it wants to know what row. And that's where these are going to come into play. I'm going to go back to Letitia here. So we got our index. It's going to search this range, right? Oh, this range right here, the names, because that ultimately that's what we want to get back, A2 to A21. And then utilizing small, row, and column, it's going to find the proper row. Now we've also got an if in there because remember the if we only want project A where this column right here is equal to project A. So if E4 project A is equal to or is found within this range right here, then give that back to me. Let's see this. I'm going to highlight that range. Little magic here. On my keyboard, I'm going to hit F9. This will evaluate that section of my formula, the highlighted section. Whoop. So I can see here that, yep, it found it. True, true. First two are true. Next three are false. C, D, B. Those aren't A, right? And then the next one is a true. Project A, and so on. So it just goes through and finds out where they're located at. True, I found it. True, true, true. False, false, false. True, true, and so on. I'm going to hit my escape key. Close out of that evaluation. If you use the F9, you want to make sure you hit the escape key to close out of the evaluated. Now, that's our if. And then here, row, we gave it an entire range, B2 to B21. So it's just going to give me the row numbers for each of these. But subtract one, 
because we want project A or the first one to start in row one, when in reality, row one is project. So if I highlight that, hit F9, it'll evaluate it, and it'll just give me back all the row numbers. Now, why is that important? Well, if I evaluate this entire thing here, whoop, that's the if with our true false and our numbers. I'm gonna hit my escape key first. Let's try that again. I'll highlight that entire thing. F9. So now it's giving me back the row one, two, but then we got some empty ones in there because those were the false values. And then true again, which gives me back the six which is the row position. Then the column minus five gives me back the smallest value within that range. So if I do the entire small thing here, F9, we're getting back the one, the first position. If I copy this over one, Felicia, Let's grab this entire small here. Where's Alicia at? Is Alicia in the first position, the second, the third, the fourth, so on? If I hit F9, Alicia's in the, Felicia is in the second position, and so on. So I can copy this over. I think there's five. Rudy, let's see if there's one more. Jenna, is there another one? Alice, oh, there's more. Oh, okay. So Ellis is the last one. It gave me an error because it couldn't find any more matches. I'm going to copy that down. There's all of them there. All right. These guys only have four each. So like I said, a bit more involved, a bit more moving parts. There's a few functions going on in there. Well worth your time if you're on 2016 or newer to break down that formula. See all the moving parts that are happening within there. Okay. And find a reason to use it. Find some way you can apply it to your own work. And then you'll just adjust the ranges to fit your needs. Now, that's the first approach, 2016 and older. The second one, much simpler, much more streamlined because of the new text join function. Take a look. So here, it's using two functions. We've got text join and the if. Now, the text join function, all it does is take a range of cells, combine them all together based on a delimiter. Kind of like this list right here. Letitia, comma, space, comma, space being a delimiter. Felicia, comma, space, Garland, comma, space, and so on. Take a look. If I do this, equals text join. First thing it wants to know is the delimiter. I'll just do a comma and a space. Oop. Try that again equals text join, comma, space. The next thing it wants to know is whether or not you want to ignore the empty cells. So eventually I'm gonna give it this range right here of names. If there was an empty name in there, we could say ignore it or include it. In our case, I'm gonna say true because I want to ignore it. And then the last thing it wants to know is the range. And that's it. And I'll close my parentheses, hit my enter. And now I've got a list of all those names separated by the comma and space. Now, the tricky part for our example is we want just the names for a specific project. So in steps, the if function. Let's get rid of this. So I'm going to hop up to here, take a look at my formula. So this last portion of the text join was the array or the text values. So here we're using the if. So if this range right here is equal to E13, so if this, oh, excuse me, wrong one. If this range right here is equal to E13, if that's there, then give me back this range, A2 to A21. If not, then give me back nothing, which is empty, and the text join will ignore it. If I try this out, equals text join. My delimiter, again, it's gonna be the comma, space. That's my delimiter, and how we're gonna separate each of them. Comma, we are going to ignore the empty cells. And then my range is gonna use the if. So we'll say, if this range right here, I'm gonna lock that down. 
is equal to this. And we're going to lock down the E portion or the E column. It's equal to that. Then give me back this. We'll lock that down. If not, give me back nothing. And that is it. There we go. Juliet, Roscoe, Linwood, Morton. Juliet, Roscoe, Linwood, Morton. Copy that down. And we're done. What do you think? Text join an if. 2019 and newer. So if you're there, congratulations. Much simpler, much more streamlined. If not, you can still do it. It just takes a bit more work. Index, small, if, and in our case, a row and a column. Try this out. You got the exercise file. If you haven't already, hop down to the description, download the file from the Office Noob blog. You can find it there. And if you've enjoyed this video, you learned something new, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I appreciate you joining me here. Hopefully you learned something new here and I'll see you in the next video.